that the Moderna and Pfizer COVID-19 vaccines demonstrated efficacy in more than 90% of Phase 3 trial participants is cause for celebration. Developed at breakneck speed with heretofore unrealized mRNA technology, they have without a doubt made history, especially now that the British government has authorized the Pfizer vaccine for mass use. The problem, and regrettably, it is a big one, is that only a very small fraction of the global population will be able to reap the rewards of this achievement. To remain stable, the Pfizer vaccine must be stored in specialized freezers kept at an ultra-low temperature of negative 94 degrees Fahrenheit. Such storage units are manufactured at a select few, freezer farms, and priced at $10,000 to $15,000 apiece. While the Moderna vaccine doesn't demand as deep a freeze, the requisite negative 4 degrees Fahrenheit is comparable to a standard home freezer, both must be administered in two doses a month apart, a logistical hurdle not uncommon but certainly not ideal in a quest for worldwide inoculation. Even hospitals in the United States and Europe, where governments have already bought up hundreds of millions of doses of the mRNA vaccines, will be hard-pressed to secure the equipment necessary for their safe storage and transport, especially those in small towns and rural areas where many residents, due to adverse socioeconomic and health conditions, are disproportionately vulnerable to COVID-19. The same is true of remote regions in Africa, Latin America, and Asia. Erlanga Hartardo, head of the COVID-19 task force in Indonesia, told Reuters that in his country, the Pfizer vaccine has already been ruled out as a viable option, so unlikely is it to survive distribution between 270 million people across 17,000-plus islands. In other words, Pfizer and Moderna have created a Lamborghini when what most countries really need is a Toyota, a vaccine that can be manufactured, stored, and administered simply and cheaply, preferably via existing distribution channels. Luckily, such alternatives exist. One is the adenovirus vaccine being developed by companies like AstraZeneca and Johnson & Johnson, which uses a non-lethal cold-causing viral vector as its means of inoculation, rather than synthetic proteins as mRNA vaccines do. Adenovirus vaccines are, however, hampered by one deep and fundamental flaw. Recipients would risk developing immunity not just to COVID-19, but the vector itself, meaning after initial rounds of rollout, another candidate might have to be developed from scratch. The AstraZeneca vaccine and others of its ilk can be thought of as Mercedes, not as high maintenance as a Lamborghini, but certainly not as practical as a Toyota. Chances are high that vaccination against COVID-19 won't be a one-and-done affair, but an annual or even biannual reoccurrence like the seasonal flu shot. As such, the most efficacious vaccine will be one that can be deployed for years to come.